There's nothing Adele couldn't think of to do She's all you ever needed in the wrong situation You're caught in the middle, no way of escaping Till out of the blue she runs into you There's nothing that she couldn't do She's a travel counselor So Isabella, how's your song coming along? Have you finished it yet? Um, yeah, nearly. I've just got a couple more bits to do at the end. But oh, you're yeah. working really hard on that, aren't yeah. you? How long has it taken you so far? Um, a couple of weeks. Wow, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. That's awesome. And then after that, what happens? You just get a new one? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> How many songs have you done so far? Um, three. Three? That's Fini good. Three finished one. That's a good start. That's yeah. awesome. Well done. And how are you feeling, Connie? How's your week been? A bit better this week. Yeah, yes. that's good to hear. So, wh why is it a bit better? Um, well, we listened to um, the advice you uh, gave us last time. I read also the paperwork you gave oh, me. Oh, good. Did that help you? No, definitely, because yeah, a lot of things that I wasn't aware of, and yep. um, obviously, um, she does a lot of those things that you that mentioned. Yeah, the, there you go. So, yeah, slowly, yeah. I think. And I think I'm getting more um, relaxed, as in I don't get upset as quickly. I, I, I'm trying to be more patient. Um, Good. So, yeah, so you're you're nodding yes, Isabella. Yeah. So you've <laughs> noticed a big difference. Yeah. Your mum. Yeah. What's yeah. different about her? Um, she kind of just like leaves me now, some sort of to do like my music and stuff. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So she kind of gives you that space. You're ready to eat? Um, well, yeah, I've just got like a little bit left to write and then I'll be finished. Come on. I asked you about half an hour ago to be ready for dinner. I've just got like a little bit left and then I'll come downstairs. No, no, we're not gonna have this argument again. Just a little bit left and then I'll okay. come downstairs. Come here, we need to talk. We can't keep going like this, alright? I can't keep arguing with you about everything. I just everything. want to write a little bit more and no, then I'll come downstairs. I just, it's just a little bit and You're then I'll come You're not listening down. to me. Okay? If I say something, you need to do it. I'll come down for dinner soon. I just need to finish writing the rest No, it's not like this. You always it. have to just argue. Just let me do stop. it. Okay, we need to stop doing that. Alright? I said in 10 minutes, dinner. I just want to finish no, it doesn't work like this. And then no, I'll come downstairs. <sighs> Do you remember what Adele said? Yes. yes. Breathing. Okay, I'm gonna give you another ten minutes, and then you'll come downstairs and meet me for dinner. Okay. All right. But at the same time, you do know it's a two-way thing, too, yeah. So it's not just about your mum and dad giving you all of your space to do your thing. You still also need to, you know, do a bit on your part too. So it's meeting halfway. So have you done anything for mum? Um, no. <laughs> not really? All right, maybe that's what you can work on this week. That maybe if mum asks you for something, um, then... You know, maybe like if she wants you to go shopping with her or something like that, instead of just saying no, you give her that hour. But she tells you it's only going to be one hour, you know. So that's one thing is don't tell her one hour and then it ends up being five hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, meet halfway, all right. Um, because, you know, in life, even if you do have this condition, it's still important that you learn how to, to cope with it and how to live with it because you're not going to be able to stay home every day for the rest of your life yeah so you still need to develop those skills and the thing is i need to teach you how to do that all right so one is it's called exposure therapy all right so you did you find did you try breathing this week yes yeah how was the breathing um well for me it was a bit more i think more difficult because i'm definitely not used to doing that uh, yeah so yeah i think i 
actually left the room before anything and then did it on my own by myself. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> So we need to develop skills in order to help you, Isabella, cope with being in public spaces because the last thing that we want for you is to not know how to do that and stay home every day, which it's just not possible because you're going to need to get a job when you get older, you have to finish schooling, you're always going to need to get out there and it, it, it can be done. Okay, I've spoken to a lot of adult who, who do have Asperger's okay. and autism and they have all learnt how to how to function okay in, in public sp spaces all right okay. they still don't love it but they know how to and it's a very important skill so exposure therapy is really important for you and what that means is that even though mum has been kind enough to allow you to stay in your room and write music she's still it's still her job to expose you to the outside world Do you want to go to the shops with me? I uh, know, I'm just in the middle of a song. Oh, come on, just for half an hour. No, I just want to finish, like, I'm still writing it and just mucking around. I just want to finish it. All right, but I need you just, I just to tell me what you want. the song. Okay. Hi. I think that's what I find it hard, actually, because, yeah, the, the, when I was talking to my friends, um, they were just saying that, you know, it's her age. That's what they do, teenagers and yeah. things like this. Um, yeah. And for me, I find it very hard to just parent her. And that's what I was saying about shutting it down instead of actually trying to just tell her off if I have to. Yeah. I, I just go away and I just let her do her thing. And I don't know if it's helping her or if I'm actually making it worse for her. Yeah, so. you don't want to, this is the tricky thing. You don't want to enable it yeah. to a point where they're not learning skills, but you don't want to make them hate life either exactly so it's it's a really fine line between learning how to come halfway mm. all right so maybe it's about starting small so instead of going to a massive shopping center to do shopping maybe you could just go to a small one where there's not a lot of commotion yeah. around is is there one like that around where it's isolated to just the supermarket yeah, yeah we yeah? can go to the market so maybe maybe you can just start off by going with your mum but it's just for one hour all right, so it's not for a long, long time. Will, will you be willing to try that? So when you do that, how does it feel? You were, you were telling me that you just don't like it, but how do you physically feel when you're out in public spaces? Um, well, it just makes me feel like uncomfortable, like, I don't know, something's gonna happen or, I don't know. Okay, tell me what's the worst that could happen when you go shopping with mum? I don't know. Um. Sometimes our brains and our thoughts um, take us to places that is really unnecessary. She's a travel counselor. Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, the school called me back about the um, bullying. Oh, yes. And um, they gave me a few information, just asking me a couple of questions, just so we can see what was going on and the names of the kids and everything. But I did mention to them about um, Isabella being tested. Oh, yes. And they didn't seem to be aware of anything. Um, mm. Yes, they just okay. they asked me actually why would I um, think of doing that. And really? Yeah, That's so, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I was quite surprised about this. Um, and I asked them about her, her behavior in class, during class with the classmates, with the teachers. And for them, she's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. So what can happen is sometimes, just sometimes, Teachers are very used to students being a certain way mm -hmm. and they don't recognise it as anything else. Mm -hmm. They just think, okay, that's just her, that's just the way she is. Um, or maybe she doesn't, she's not presenting with the issues inside the class, um, but I still think it, it, it absolutely needs to be investigated. You know, if it's not, great, we've ruled it out, we don't have to worry about it. And if it is, great, again, because then we can help, help her. Okay. All right? Um, would you mind if I gave them a phone call during the week just to talk about things with them, um, yeah, certain think. behaviours and what you're... Because they also don't know what you're experiencing at home. Yes, not definitely. But the fact that she has had quite a lot of time off school should be red, flag, red flags for them as well. Mm -hmm. 
So it could just be that they're just not thinking on that on that um, train of thought. Okay, yeah, so, but I always say, let's be safe. Let's just rule it out, in or out. Okay. All right? No, that's fine. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll give them a call okay. and, and I'll talk to them about yeah. my perspective on things as well. All right? And remember, you know, they're not, not all teachers have been trained in it. They, they just cut, they might skim through that subject, but they, not everyone is experienced in, in looking at kids with, that are on the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to go back to the exposure therapy that I think is, is going to be really important for Isabella's, um, you know, getting her used to being in public spaces. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you, you, quite, you quite enjoy being with your cousins, don't you? Yeah. And you love playing basketball with them and playing sport with them. Yeah. So you don't get anxiety with them, do you? No. Is it no. just, what about when there's cousins and then parents in the room and, and the room gets full? Yeah, I don't really like that. <laughs> yeah. So what I want you to do in that scenario is I want you to take a, a sit, just sit back a bit and I want you to find out what your brain is telling you about that situation. So I say, all right, what is actually bad about this situation? All right. So what, what do you think your thoughts will tell you? Um, I don't know, just that there's too many people and it would just be uncomfortable yeah it's just yeah. uncomfortable yeah and that's the part we've got to get used to is just getting a little bit more comfortable you may not ever love it but you'll be able to cope with it so what we need to do is keep you in the here and now because remember you said that you know sometimes you worry about if there's too many people if you're shopping or whatever something bad might happen well the here and now uh, actually stops you from going too much into the future with things like oh what if this happens and what if that happens so I want you to sit down and say, okay, there's a lot of people in this room right now. And I want you to kind of have a look at all the different people that are in there and say, okay, that's my uncle. How do I feel about my uncle? So what, what do you think about your relatives? Um, I like them. I, I get along with them and stuff. There you go. Okay. Do they make you feel happy? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. But so as, a, as separate people, you like them, but then as soon as they all get into one yeah. room, it just becomes too much, yeah? So just try and isolate each person and see them as one person as opposed to one big massive room full of people. Okay. So it's simplifying your thoughts. Do you think it would be good as well um, if she could try to talk to me about it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. So maybe, Connie, you know that she thinks like that now. Mm -hmm. So maybe when you're at a party, you can maybe um, take her out, take her out of the room and say, how are you feeling? Yeah. What are your thoughts telling you? How's, how's your body feeling? And maybe tap into her. Okay. We call it tap into her emotions okay. to get her used to express, expressing. Okay. Now, don't be surprised if um, she can't tell you what it is because sometimes um, kids can get really overwhelmed with a lot of emotions okay. and they're not able to, to talk about how they're feeling. Now, as I said, I don't think you're too high up on that spectrum, but there are kids who, who feel disattached from being able to explain how they're feeling they don't know they just they know they don't feel okay mm -hmm. but they don't know why okay yeah so uh don't don't be afraid to have breaks but definitely go to somebody's house try to enjoy being with them but have regular breaks okay maybe go out for some fresh air if you need it or sit with mum even yeah right be good. and maybe connie you can let you can let the people you're visiting let them know that okay this is um part of the therapy you know she's just getting used to being around people yeah how do you feel about that yeah, yeah is that all right and obviously it's around people that who, who already know that we've had this conversation because i know yeah. that you said you've talked to some friends about it um, i think it will be, yeah i think it would be great to um, actually spoke, speak to them and just explain to them what's going on yeah so how did you go with your routine remember we wrote down that routine yeah good i like stuck to it and everything was good yeah so you went back to school did you go more regularly to um, school yeah there was still a couple of days i stayed home but i went most so that's days. been an improvement that's, hasn't yeah, it yes. so have things been a lot calmer now that you've gone there like uh, between you and mum yeah and dad? i think so yeah less arguing yeah <laughs> yeah because if you're doing the things that you need to do such as go to school mum's going to be calmer 
She's not going to be yeah. so anxious about, oh my gosh, she's not at school, what am I going to do? And then she's not going to get so angry. Yeah. yeah. And it makes me feel better as a mum as well. Yeah, because I know you, you were talking a lot about, you know, your guilt around feeling yeah. like you haven't been a good mother. Yeah. How, how's that going for you? Well, be much better definitely this week because, as a, like she said, um, she went to school. And, yeah. Um, it just made me feel like she was doing, achieving things yeah. and we were going, we we're moving forward and now I'm very proud of it. Um, I'm very proud of her and yeah, slowly yeah. but surely. And this is the thing, it doesn't, um, this, if she has got that condition, it doesn't need to ruin your relationship at all. It's just about understanding. You need, like, now you've become a little bit more knowledgeable on the condition mm -hmm. and, and um, so, you know, about breathing and keeping your anxieties low. Mm -hmm. And if, if um, Isabel is starting to get really angry, just back right off. Don't, uh, try to prevent her from escalating at that level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, do you know what the warning signs are, bef like before, just before a meltdown? Um, I felt like she was um, m agitating. Uh, her body was more fidgeting. Yeah, M moving around. Yeah. Um, okay. No, definitely. Obviously, her voice raised. Yeah. So you you will know by her facial expressions and the way she acts that she's starting to get. Yeah. She aroused. doesn't have any more those uh, red rashes, so that's that's. That's good. good. So um, bre keep breathing. Yeah. Keep breathing. That's good. And giving yourself some breaks. Yeah. When you both get upset or you're starting to get upset, just go to your rooms or just, you know, go, yeah. go into your corners, have some um, time out and revisit, revisit it a bit later. She's a travel counsellor. Isabella, do you mind if I have a bit of a chat with your mum for a minute on her on her That's own. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. I just wanted to have a bit of a discussion, just me and you, without worrying yeah, sure. about Isabella. Um, so the the biggest thing that we've got to worry about is that through all this, Isabella doesn't lose confidence in herself. Mm -hmm. That's why it's really important that we still allow her to keep doing her music and you know really thrive in that because if you had a look on that sheet it would have said that all people who are on the spectrum are very quite gifted in one area and yeah. they're very 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 interested in the one area and music might be her thing mm -hmm. so we're, if we take that away from her I think that'd be quite detrimental to her yeah, no. so I want to keep that going but uh, has she got a singing teacher or something like that um, no she actually self-taught she self-taught yeah that might be a really good thing for her if you uh, allow her to have singing lessons. And oh. I know it can be a bit um, expensive, so I don't know. Hopefully you can afford it. But if you can't, uh, there are grants that the council can, can actually give out to, okay. to kids who apply for yeah. it, for things like that to, to help. Okay, that so happen. that might be a really good thing because it's a teacher mm -hmm. and her to start off with. Yeah. And then maybe they'll do concerts and then she'll slowly get confidence in performing. Mm -hmm. And that will help her cause. Yeah. With um, the exposure therapy. Okay. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, I like the idea actually. Um, yeah. I know she loves music. She, that's yeah. all she does every day. Um, yeah. And she's, she is very good. Yeah. Um, so for you, when you were younger, you loved sports and you yeah. loved getting involved that way. This might be her version of sport. Yeah. No, I, I understand that. I thought it was more the fact that she was always just doing that one thing and not getting out of the room yes. and not yeah. doing anything else and socializing. And yeah, I think for me, it was that hard part. Um, to be, to, to see her not being able to socialize and do yeah. things like that. Um, but, yeah, so. but it's really important we get professionals to look at this. Yeah. Yeah, who are actually specialized in that area. So mm -hmm. I'll then put the referral through and there is a waiting list, yeah. so, uh, okay. you know, yeah. Do we know the time approximately? Or? There's usually, because it's through the public system, it's probably about an eight month, oh, waiting, oh, six okay. to eight months. Okay. Yeah, um, it depends where we go, but yeah, it, it w won't be happening immediately, unfortunately. It's a team of people that actually diagnose, so it's not one person. It's not a psychologist or a psychiatrist only. It's a, it's a speech pathologist, it's a psycho psychologist, oh. and it's a team of people. Okay. And then they all write reports, they put the report together, yeah. and then, then they can see. Um, I was just wondering, is it okay for me to come and listen to you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Every now and then I get a little bit down Even though you're here, you're not around I can see
Can't you hold me in your 